Hey YouTube, and always post 1975. Do you remember your first time? Yeah, get your mind out of the gutter. I mean, the first time you set foot in that sacred, sacred, hallowed place, the amusement arcade. You know, I do. See, when I was a kid, we used to go on holiday in a sunny little seaside town called Blue Anchor. Picture. I know, I know, caravan holiday, how quaintly British, you know, but the truth is, some of my fondest memories as a child were my holidays in Blue Anchor, you know. It, do you ever notice that when you were a kid, it was always sunny? I mean, clearly it wasn't, but you never remember it raining. But yeah, I, I always remember going on holiday in Blue Anchor and it just being baking hot. Glorious blue skies, steam trains chugging along in the background, which right now would probably piss me off because where we used to stay, there was a steam train track right behind the field. And yeah. So as a kid, like, that's awesome. As an adult, you'd be like, for God's sake, I'm trying to sleep. But, yeah. Bottom line is, some of my fondest memories as a child are from Blue Anchor. Now, there was a town down the road, just down the road, literally, I don't know, five minutes? Actually, it is five minutes, because it's part of my glorious midlife crisis. I went to this place uh, a couple of years ago or so, just to see if it was still like I remember. And I did actually find where the caravan we stayed in actually was, and took a picture of it. Yeah, it's not a caravan anymore. It's a piece of tarmac. But it doesn't matter, because, you know, it, it was still kind of cool to revisit it. But, yeah, getting away, waffling. Just down the road was this amazing little uh, coastal town called Minehead. And um, they had, uh, well, they probably had many, many, numerous uh, amusement arcades. I know they had a Butlins. And as a kid, I always thought Butlins was amazing. As an adult, having been to Butlins, I realised that it's shit. But, yeah, that this one specific amusement arcade, I remember. Anyway, picture of Butlins. I just realised I, I shot that clip and then I actively found a picture of Butlins and put it in. I was supposed to say Minehead, not Butlins, Minehead. But never mind, I'm too lazy to reshoot it. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm multitasking right now. I'm watching the Top Gear Christmas special on TV as we speak. Who says men can't multitask? Anyway, to, to, sorry, to set the scene, kind of establish how, you know, big an event walking into the arcade for me for the first time ever was. We need to establish, you know, what was going on in Ickle Dave's sort of gaming I was gonna say career. <laughs> gaming life at the time. I think I was eight? I wanna say eight. I'm going with eight. So you, you, what was going on right then? You gotta remember this is like way prehistoric, you know. Uh, this is pre uh NES, pre Master System pre all 16-bit, you know, I'm talking about 16-bit computers, you know. Um, so I was playing on my ZX Spectrum. Now, don't get me wrong, I still rank the ZX Spectrum as one of the greatest gaming machines of all time. The things they got that little box to do were absolutely fabulous. And um, I still, you know, play an emulation on my DS, you know, every week. ZX Spectrum, one of the greatest machines of all time. Uh, now we're talking the infancy of the ZX Spectrum here because obviously there were arcade conversions that came out on it. You know, all the greats came out on it: Outrun, Thunderblade, uh, Double Dragon, Renegade. I think Renegades are great, but it's one of my favorite games. But um, the point is, you know, arcade conversions did come out on it. You know, later on. But at this point, it was still in its infancy, so we were used to kind of basic games. You know, still exploring the technology or whatever. People were riding on it, and so the only place you could go to see truly, truly, you know, jaw-dropping graphics. I mean, sorry, my mates at the time had Amstrads and Commodores and they were, you know, like, higher spec machines, but they still didn't hold a fart to what I'm about to talk about. But yeah, the only place you could go that would basically let you see, you know, what games were supposed to look like, you know, what games could truly be when people made the effort was the arcades. So yeah, the first time I walked into this arcade in Minehead was absolutely like, seriously, it's like a pig in shit. Even as a child, my, my brain just went bang. It, it could not take all this stuff in. Just the noise, the smell, you know, people just banging away on buttons and shit, pumping money into machines. It was just, it was too much to take in. But it was something special, because just walking around, you didn't even have to play these machines, you know. Just walking around, just looking at them was just like, oh my god, that looks amazing. Oh my god, that looks amazing. Oh my god. How did I not know about this place? Parents, why have you only just taken me here now? You know, you should have taken me here when I was born. This place is, this place is heaven. When I die, I want to go here for eternity. 
seriously that first time I walked in the arcade was absolutely a a amazing it like I I'm gonna sound like a nerd boy I don't care just fantastic as I said before the smell just was overwhelming now I realize what the smell was it was sweat and it was shame and it was people who were basically addicted I'm addicted so I shouldn't complain about that but you know what I mean it, it, it was it, you could smell booze you could smell fags it, you could smell people with less than good hygiene but it, it, I, I can still you know remember the smell and also I can still remember the noise so we're talking 83 84 so the arcade games I saw in there you know the the, the noise I heard was I've never forgotten this to this day yeah uh, do you remember Spy Hunter do you remember the the the, the noise the arcade cabinet for Spy Hunter made you know the dun 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 sorry for the awful singing but I can still remember walking up to the, the doors of this arcade and just hearing that above everything else just blaring out just blaring out at the, the top of its lungs and I've never forgotten that and the noise slightly underneath that I can remember was um gauntlet warrior needs health now you know stuff like that but yeah just that first impression I've never forgotten it, 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 it to this day it stayed with me so these are the games I can honestly say have stayed with me from that first time in the arcade that I have never ever forgotten them. I talked about Spy Hunter. Spy Hunter is an absolute classic. Awesome steering wheel with yoke thing with the buttons on the top and you had those big chunky almost like fruit machine buttons you know on the dash that you could use for smoke and missiles and shit like that and a fantastic game. A game I also had on the Spectrum and Gauntlet. Gauntlet from day one just blew me away because it was like you can play four people on this? My brain just, as a child, could not cope that four people could simultaneously play on the same game. That was absolutely uh, uh, amazing. And do you remember the uh, uh, the full sit-down cabinet of Star Wars? It was, you know, you, you kind of sat inside and you were enveloped, you know, in like, well, plastic and machinery, but it didn't like rock or anything, but you, and you had a, an amazing yoke on that. And I think that, that along with Gauntlet, was the first time I heard synthetic speech, you, you heard the, use for look a really synthetic voice but as a kid I didn't hear that I just heard you know Alec Guinness Sir Alec Guinness talking to me just going put in 10 P's Dave amazing amazing game then you had um Return of the Jedi which uh, as a kid blew me away because I we actually saw Return of the Jedi in this town uh, prior to me walking to this arcade so so I guess this makes it 1984 but yeah, it did, that that game just blew me away. It's, just, it's amazing, it's amazing. If you look at it now, it, it, it's alright. It's proper balls hard, but it, you know, it's not groundbreaking. Then you had Paperboy. Now, as a kid, I had a BMX, I had a Rally Burner. Oh god, I miss my Rally Burner. And um, as a child, I just looked at it. It's an arcade cabinet with BMX handlebars on. I mean, what's not to love about that as a kid? amazing game uh, and also an, another game I got my Spectrum and a very good for conversion it was on the Spectrum as well Paperboy is one of my favourite games of all time then there was a Punch Out Punch Out oh my god Punch Out another great example you know dodgy synthetic speech but it had the, the, the two monitors one up here one down here and my brain just went it's got two screens that's amazing I need to play it for no other reason than it has two screens you know it, so easily corrupted as a child, you know, it could have been the worst game ever, it wasn't, it was one of the best games ever, but just my brain just went, it's got two screens, you know, like, amazing, and I, I still remember when that was like, knockout, knockout, body blow, body blow, body blow, knockout, another, you know, sound you could always hear in this arcade, ah, oh, punch out, good times. So yeah, in conclusion, um, I can still remember, I can still hear the sounds, I can still remember the smell, I, I, that first time in the arcade, that smelly little arcade in mine head left a massive lasting impression on me because you know early days of Spectrum hadn't quite hit the games that were in the arcades at the moment so that that first time was just like wow this is games this is games as they should be and I will always always remember that moment fondly like it it, it was brilliant like you know I know I'm waffling on but yeah easily one of my favorite memories ever and incidentally, when I went back uh, to Blue Anchor and Minehead, because uh, I went to Minehead as well in my midlife crisis to try and you know visit all the places I went to as a kid, sadly that arcade was gone, and that's a real shame. You know, I'm, I'm not saying it, you know it, it should have been there just for me. You know, it, it's just a real shame because it's a very very strong part of my childhood, and I will never forget it. 
So that was my first time. What was yours? I'll see you later.